It's about to go down, June is shaping up to be a really incredible month for game reveals with a brand new show announced and likely more coming. We also learned about a new Mafia game that is in development, a, a huge acquisition that could have a big impact on the Tomb Raider series and Guardians of the Galaxy and way way more. So really a ton to go over, of course if you like these big Sunday videos then leaving a like would really be awesome and subscribe because every Sunday I post a big rumor and a news roundup video like this. Even though E3 is not happening this year we will still get a ton of brand new trailers and announcements in June because next to the Xbox Bethesda show on June 12th we now also get the Summer Game Fest kickoff show on June 9th hosted by Jeff Keighley. As a quick reminder, this is where we last year got the first ever gameplay trailer of Elden Ring with a release date where we saw Tiny Tina's Wonderlands for the first time. They also had Giancarlo Esposito live to reveal a new scene out of Far Cry 6. Jeff Goldblum was also here to talk about Jurassic World Evolution 2. So they like to have big names. Maybe we see James Cameron reveal a new trailer for that Avatar game from Ubisoft here. I could see it happen. This will also be the first time that this show is watchable in cinema in IMAX in the US, UK and Canada. So then you also gotta bring the heat. The official Gotham Knights Twitter account retweeted the official announcement from Jeff Keighley and they would not do that if they weren't going to show up here, right? So high chance that we get a new trailer on June 9th. Kojima was also at the show last year. He's of course big butts with Jeff Keighley and a few weeks ago we learned that his secret project with Xbox was still on. So maybe we get a reveal during this Summer Game Fest event. Last year he revealed the Death Stranding's director Scott for PS5 and high chance that Sony wants to show up with something during this live stream again. But I think a new God of War trailer or Spider-Man 2 PS5 footage would be a little too big for this show. It might be the rumored Lost of Us remake. But I think a Horizon Forbidden West DLC announcement would make the most sense. For one, we got the first trailer for Frozen Wilds in June, four months after Zero Dawn came out. So that would be the same time window. And also because Gorilla was part of Jeff Keighley's Gamescom show, where they announced the release date for Forbidden West and also the 60 FPS update for Zero Dawn. And then at the Game Awards, they brought a new trailer and the orchestra played a song. So they like Jeff Keighley, maybe they show up here with a New Game Plus announcement and a DLC reveal. That would of course be amazing, but just my prediction. Of course, curious what you like to see, let me know in the comments down below. We'll totally do more predictions in these upcoming Sunday videos. Last year, the June schedule looked like this. Well, right now, there are only three announced shows, but the June 11th Saturday spot is still open, so I totally think Ubisoft will go there again. They will, by the way, have their investor call on May 11th, so I think they will announce their show next week too. We'll, of course, keep you posted here. Just don't expect the next Mafia game to be at Summer Game Fest yet. We did just learn that it's in development, though, thanks to Kotaku, as Hangar 13 bosses leave. Hangar 14, of course, launched Mafia 3 in 2016. It's been a while. But since then, they haven't launched any big new game. Now, sure, we should not forget the Mafia 1 remake that was very well done. And they also did the remaster trilogy, including Mafia 2 and 3 for the newer consoles. But they had way more ambitious plans, namely make an original IP. But in November last year, we learned that 2K cancelled a 53 million game in development at Hangar 13, which we later learned was a game codenamed Fault which has been in development since 2017, featuring superheroes and competitive online gameplay. They also had a spy rhythm game in the works that got cancelled, and Kotaku now notes that they also were working on a third new IP codenamed Mosaic, which was a loot-based ARPG, and this was also abandoned before it was ever officially revealed. So things are not working out at the studio, big leaders are leaving, and this now also means that they're focusing again on established friends franchises including a new mafia game and while i'm personally always interested in seeing something new from big triple a publishers because it just doesn't happen that often anymore it was at the cost of mafia 4 which 
I know a lot of people would prefer. So you got your wish because what we now learned is that it's in early development, it's codenamed Nero and it's expected to be a prequel to the Mafia trilogy. It will also be running on Unreal Engine 5 instead of the Mafia 3 engine that they also used for the recent remasters and we've of course seen many times how beautiful the Unreal Engine 5 can be especially in urban environments like with that Matrix demo you can play on next gen consoles. Mafia always looked amazing so imagine Mafia 4 looking like this four or five years from now. Because again it's still early. Steven Chin at Hangar 13 potentially started on the game in January 2022 as a senior gameplay scripter on unannounced title 2 he writes. Yeah number two and in the company wide email Hangar 13 sent to all their employees talking about the studio head Hayden Blackman stepping down they end with, we are confident the studio is in great hands heading into the multiple projects currently underway. And the team has a 2K's full support. So maybe we see something else before Mafia 4. Although good to note is that they're seemingly also helping with other 2K games. Like recently with Wonderlands. So maybe they were talking about that. Either way high chance that a new Mafia game is coming as their big new title. I overall wish them the best. And I really hope they can cross the finish line at this time. Now speaking of new titles that are still far away. In April we heard about a new Tomb Raider also being made on Unreal Engine 5. That. It likely looks like that very first Unreal Engine 5 demo they showed with also kind of Tomb Raiding. But this week's big news is that this next Tomb Raider game is not going to be published by Square Enix anymore because Embracer Group bought Crystal Dynamics, Idols Montreal and IPs including Tomb Raider for 300 million dollars. And good to know is that this also includes the Square Enix Montreal team behind Deus Ex Go for example. And if you're not familiar Embracer now owns 124 internal studios with also a lot of publishers including THQ Nordic, Deep Silver, Gearbox and Perfect World. So these Square Studios are going to fall under one of these umbrellas. I think Deep Silver but we will have to wait and see and for Embracer it's a big win because they usually do not have big AAA games. The big one coming up is of course Saints Row. They also got the Metro games and apart from that Biomutant like that's certainly not AAA looking at the size of the team that made it but it is kind of well known I guess. So my worry is that Crystal Dynamics might not get the budget it needs to make the Tomb Raider game that we kind of expect looking at the reboot trilogy. That trilogy by the way sold 38 million copies which is pretty wild. So maybe Embracer looks at that and is like here everything you need to make the best Tomb Raider game you can get. But it's kind of hard to look at their track record right. I did like the fact that they delayed Saints Row for more development time and to get it out of the crowded window. But apart from that it just hard to see how they will launch big AAA games. The other questions are regarding Marvel games. According to an analyst, Square Enix lost 200 million on both Avengers and Guardians of the Galaxy. We of course know that both titles did not set the world on fire. Marvel would have to renew the license now that it's with Embracer. So it will be very interesting to see what will happen with Marvel's Avengers. Or will they just pull the plug? And the same is needed for Guardians of the Galaxy. Like I would love a sequel. But the game also did not sell very well. What we do know is that Idols Montreal currently has several Unreal Engine 5. There we go again. A titles in the works. We see an image of Deus Ex here. Like maybe they return to that series. Do a big reboot. Like they did with the two newer titles they of course made. Human Revolution and Mankind Divided. It's something that I don't think Square would have ever allowed. The deal also includes Thief, maybe we see more of that, and Legacy of Kane. And Embracer likes to bring back older titles, looking at Kingdoms of Amalur, Destroy All Humans, Spongebob. So maybe we see more of these older franchises, at least remastered for newer platforms. And we also learned that Crystal Dynamics is still helping Microsoft's The Initiative with Perfect Dark. So that's also good news. Only the Marvel games are kind of the question mark. And again, will these big studios get the funding they need to make the AAA games we expect? And many think that with Square Enix selling off their Western developers, that they're becoming an acquisition target for PlayStation. Because they now mostly have their Japanese units left. 
And if you think about it, the biggest games they got coming, Final Fantasy 16, Final Fantasy 7 Remake Part 2, Forspoken, they're all going to be PlayStation 5 console exclusive. But there's more going on. Multiple sources to Greg Miller and Jeff Grubb note that PlayStation is looking to buy Square Enix. And especially Jeff Grubb, of course, has a great track record. Now, it wasn't enough for him to make a like article about it. Things are still moving, of course. But it is interesting that then, out of nowhere, Square Enix is kind of selling off their units, which might help with a possible acquisition. Now, also good to note is that Square Enix is still making a ton of Nintendo Switch games. This year alone, they made that Final Fantasy Mario Kart clone and also the Triangle Strategy game. So what will happen with that if Sony buys it, right? Will they continue? Will these resources be allocated to PlayStation? That's interesting. Also worth noting is that they still have some Western IP, Life is Strange, Just Cause and Outriders. So if someone buys Square Enix like PlayStation, they would also get those IP while Tomb Raider again has been sold. But yeah, you could argue that Sony could use Tomb Raider as well. Imagine an Uncharted Tomb Raider crossover or Crystal Dynamics working on an Uncharted game. That would be amazing. So then it's weird that they sold off these units, right? If Sony might like want to buy Square Enix as a whole. So we can speculate all we want. We just have to wait and see. I do think though that with Final Fantasy XIV like being this big success and growing even for a big live service game, that's something that Sony is just missing right now. And I think that's why Square Enix might be a big like target because looking at Capcom, Sega, they don't really have this ongoing success for many years. So maybe that's why they are also looking at Square and thinking, we want that. But again, we will have to wait and see. So this coming week, I think is going to be pretty big. Not only because we are getting close to that Summer Game Fest, but also because there are many investor goals. Gonna look now, we have EA, Nintendo, PlayStation, Bandai Namco, Capcom, Ubisoft and Square Enix all in one week. Now, of course, we don't really care about the amount of money they made. Sure, it's interesting to know if they're like doing well or not, but they will also always like kind of look ahead. And this is the time period where they look ahead to the rest of the year. So for Ubisoft, I expect them to say the amount of AAA games they got planned. Like, do they already tease Assassin's Creed Rift, the new AC game? So we will have to wait and see. We'll report back next week. I'll be here with us next Sunday video. And of course, we'll have many other videos throughout the week. So I hope to see you then, like the video to show your support if you like these big videos. And check out my previous video on the big games that are still coming in 2022. And we might hear about some new ones in the coming weeks. We'll keep you posted, speak to you soon, goodbye.